Welcome to part four for our Galaxy Defiance space shooter. In this video, we're going to be creating a scrolling, the parallax scrolling effect with the stars in the background. So first let's create a new scene. And this scene is going to be using an other node. And if we come under canvas layer here, we can see there's a parallax background node. So we're gonna select that and we'll save this as a space background. And we won't save it in projectiles, we can save it inside of effects. Now we need to create some parallax layers. So this parallax background uh, node, we can create some parallax layers on it. So let's create a parallax layer node. Here we go. And we're going to have three parallax layers. So I'm going to hold control D. I'm going to hold control and hit D to duplicate these. And we'll have uh, space layer. We'll have uh, far stars layer. And we'll have close stars layer. Okay, let's start with the space layer. We're gonna add a new node to this. And you might think we could use a sprite and technically we could use a sprite, but I've found that the texture rect node works really useful for this because we can easily um, repeat the texture rect node. So this is just a way of displaying an image similar to a sprite, but it's usually used for control nodes. So let's find our space uh, PNG. We can drag it into here. And now we need this to scale across the entire image here. Uh, so we can turn on snap here and drag this out and then drag it down to the base here. Now the problem is that it's not repeating, it's just scaling. So when we come to our stretch mode here, we want to do tile. And now what that will do is it will just tile and repeat um, that texture across that. So we'll call this space. And we'll add another texture rect here. And we'll call this one bar stars. And then we can type stars down here and bring over far stars. We'll set it to tile as well. And then drag it down. Now you can see these are slightly larger than the small stars in the very background. And then we'll do our close stars here. Extra rect as well. Close stars, tile. We can tile this like that. Okay, save. Now if we come back into our world, we can add our space background. And the space background is a scene here, not a node, so we can instance a scene and just do space background. And this already looks better than what we had before, simply because it's some sort of a background. But our ship doesn't look like it's moving at all. So we're gonna to want to create that movement. So let's attach a script to space background here. And we're going to, we're going to manipulate some of the properties inside of our, of the different layers. And to do that, we'll want to have access to each of them. So if you hold control and select our space layer, far stars layer and close stars layer, we can give them all unique names, access as unique names. And we can drag them over, hold control, drop, and we've got access to all of them now. And uh, what we can do is in the process function of each of these layers, we should be able to manipulate their offset. And I can show you what that looks like actually in the editor. So let's look at this close star layer. It's the easiest one to see. See this offset value here? If we manipulate the Y value here, 
it will, well, I guess it's not going to show it here. Okay, so it might not update it in the editor, as far as I can tell. So we might have to actually just write some code to make sure this is working. So let's do this. Let's go, uh, let's go close stars layer dot motion offset dot y plus equals uh, 20 times delta. I want to multiply by delta so we get smooth, smooth movement, but we're just going to be manipulating the y offset every single frame in order to create some motion on it. And we can run this scene specifically by pressing this button here, which will only run this scene. And there you can see that affecting the stars now. But now look, we run out of stars here. See, it, 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 it's moving it, but then it runs out and we don't have any more. So how do we fix that? If we come to our close stars layer, uh, what you want to do is turn on mirroring. So what happens is um, if you turn on mirroring on this layer, what Godot will do is it will take this uh, image that we have here and it will create a second copy down here if we mirror it on the Y. And then each time this moves off the screen, the second copy will move up here and it will kind of create like an infinite scrolling effect by using those two copies. Each time one of them moves off the screen too far, the other one will come in and replace it. And we can set up our mirroring here to be the same size as our room, which is 240. So the Y mirroring Y value set up to 240. And you can see that it actually draws it down here in the editor. So we can see the second copy that it has created. And now if we run the game, um, the stars will infinitely loop like this. They'll never run out. So we can do that same thing for our other layers as well. So come into far stars, set up mirroring to be 240, and space layer, set up mirroring to be 240. And then for each of our um, layers here, we can move them as well. So space layer dot motion offset dot y plus equals, uh, let's do two times delta. And then bar stars layer dot motion offset dot y plus equals five times delta be something like this. And then we can save, run just this scene again. Well, I guess we could run the whole scene. You can see all of the stars are moving. However, the closer stars are moving more quickly. And there's kind of stars in the middle, and it creates this nice 3D parallax effect. And if we run our game, we get this illusion of motion on our ship. And later, we'll make it so that the ship, uh, the stars move faster as the ship's score increases to kind of increase the intensity as you're getting farther along. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave it at this speed. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you learned something and enjoyed it. If you're interested in my Godot courses, they're on sale right now for a fall sale. These YouTube videos are only made possible by the people who support me through those courses. YouTube ad revenue, unfortunately, is not enough to sustain uh, a business like this. Um, so the courses are what make it possible for me to make free content on YouTube. And I love being able to give away content and I, I hope that this series is, I put a lot of work into it so far. I hope that um, that work is paying off and that you're finding it to be useful to you. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.